Thank you. Welcome back to Pit Tonight. Thank you. Thank you. This is our 21st episode, and just like my 21st birthday party, it's free for guys to get in, and girls, it's five dollars. <laughs> oh, Dan, you gotta run that by me next time, man. That spooked me. That's why we do dress rehearsals? But right now, we're gonna take a look at the news. Uh, the government of Colombia, a government. This is why threw me off everything, Dan. Um, so I'm going to take a look at the news. Uh, uh, the government of a Colombian town told its citizens that one way to stay cool during their heat wave is to avoid sex. And apparently right after that, they said, and if you want to stay really cool, you can wait till marriage. <laughs> it's just lovely. An Amish man has launched his own Uber-style service where he picks up people in a horse and buggy. To call the service, all you have to do is pull out your phone and scream the name, Johannes! <laughs> Johannes! Until he hears you, so. <laughs> An Oregon man was sentenced to 130 days of prison for harassing a buffalo, but it was kind of fair. The buffalo had sex with his wife, so. <laughs> Gotta be a man about something. <laughs> Lay down the law. Scientists now say that no level of alcohol consumption is in any way healthy. Yeah, I agree. Uh, because if it's not healthy, then why did it give me the courage to talk to that guy last week and throw up on him? So, Andrew won, signed to zero. Uh, the Georgetown Library was forced to close for two days after finding snakes on the lower floors. And I'm as surprised as you. I didn't know Taylor Swift could read. That's right, we're starting to be with Taylor Swift right now, 100%. A Florida conservative congressional candidate told Miami reporters she'd been abducted by aliens. Now, some, some Floridians are worried that she'd be unstable in Congress, but most of Florida just shrugged and went back to wrestling those gators. <laughs> NASA has released 19,000 hours of audio from the first ever manned mission to space. And I think the most interesting part is the 500 hours Neil Armstrong spends calling Buzz Aldrin a fucking loser. <laughs> A Tennessee man was arrested last week for throwing a biscuit, quote, really hard at his ex's face. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> um, which seems bad, but the only thing my ex has ever thrown at me are snaps of them having sex with much hotter dudes. So, <laughs> I take, <laughs> that wasn't nice. <laughs> That wasn't like a good thing for me. I would prefer if they didn't do that. Um, a, White, a White House aide claimed that after a meeting with Michael Cohen, she saw Donald Trump eating important documents. I know what you're thinking, but that doesn't mean Donald is hiding incriminating evidence. Maybe it just said, if you don't eat this paper, you're gay. And then like he'd have to eat it, so yeah, well, Thank you so much. We have a great show for tonight. We have Dave Bracey here, we have Siobhan Vivian later, and the Lone Primes are here. But right now, please give it up for the Allies of the Boulevard. Hey, welcome back to Lit tonight. It's Drew.Dow on Insta, but I'm sure you already all follow. Um, a few years back, I was in your Sperry's, and I was just chilling the audience wondering, yeah, what would this whole college thing be like? But don't worry, I'm your resident big dog on campus, and I'm gonna show you the ropes. And like, you can see me as an older brother, but like an older brother, you can bang. Now, <laughs> now let Papa Andrew tell you how it is. Now, the staff doesn't want me to tell you all these secrets, but uh, I play by my own rules. So, uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. Now, I don't know if you guys know this yet, but you can get into any party you want at Pitt with this password. Anyone wanna talk about anime? 
And you can just get in. Don't even worry. Just let you in. Number two. Now, I know a lot of you think you're going to have a fun time here, get really lucky at things, and uh, keep a condom in your wallet. Because there's a guy in the quad who trades condoms for snacks. So, like. <laughs> Three. Uh, another fun little party trick. If you write your phone number on every bathroom on campus, they're gonna be straight boys who send you nudes. So, uh, mosey up. <laughs> another thing, though. Every single person on this campus is technically gay. So you're gonna have to adapt everyone. <laughs> if you want some action around Pitt's campus, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be gay. Uh, don't. <laughs> you know, I got really desperate for it my second semester, and I just switched. <laughs> These are horrible. Um, don't clap for this. <laughs> You're disgusting if you do this. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, now I know a lot of you have been at market, you know, stir fry, chicken, all that stuff, food, uh, and if you go to market, I like one cup every day at market, and if you get that cup, you get a prize. It's mono. Um, <laughs> Next one, um, if you ever see the police, you know, those guys, uh, and you challenge them to a duel and you win, the whole city's yours. <laughs> you get a takeover. <laughs> now this is, the next stuff is some real stuff, you know, stuff the staff definitely doesn't want me to tell you about. Hey, some of you cover your ears. Nah, it's cool. <laughs> now, there's this man around campus. I don't know if you heard about him. Chancellor Gallagher. <laughs> well, if you ever get in a little scuffle with him, just uh, his real name's Patrick Gallagher. <laughs> so uh, feel free to bust that out on him. Probably cry. <laughs> now, another, another co-big man on campus with me. There's a guy, I don't know if you've heard of him, uh, Jesus Christ. He actually, he actually went to Pitt. <laughs> but we can't talk about it technically because it's not true. So now, is everyone excited for Tuesday, that therapy dog Tuesday? Uh, don't be, stop it. No, don't, don't wolf at that, that's odd. Um, no, I, I was like you once, naive, bright eyed. Bushy tailed uh, <laughs> dogs. Um, but I wouldn't be so excited because all of those dogs, they used to be people, so. This. Now I know you guys see me up here. Living large, <laughs> you know, just killing it. <sighs> it being my lungs. Uh, but if you want to be the host of the pitch tonight, there's only one way. You gotta kill me. <laughs> Which isn't that hard. <laughs> and finally, um, on a serious note, um, one of my older friends told me this when I first got to Pitt, and it is some good advice. Um, when you go to your first class, just remember this. Pit is an anagram for tit P. So, <laughs> at Dow Drew. <laughs> Ow. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back to Pit Tonight. Our first guest is a man of many talents. He's a stand-up director for the Pittsburgh Comedy Festival, a podcaster, and a co-creator of Fresh Fest. Please welcome Jay Bracey. Yeah.
<laughs> Thank you for bringing your own water. Yeah. These are I, both mine now. Yeah. No, I was actually looking. I've always wanted to drink. I, was, I always wondered what was in there. I was hoping it was whiskey. Um, I'm 20. No. <laughs> Um, speaking of that, I actually like love the fact that like I was like I was, I was like, wasn't there another host for this? And they were like, yeah, no. he graduated. And I was like, I think it's I think it's dope that y'all got like built-in term limits for this. You know what I mean? Like I'm a, a big I don't proponent. know if we do. I don't think we have to really like make a term limit. I mean, we can do this. Like, you just gonna be the old guy hanging out ten years from now, like that guy that's at the parties. That, How's the people on college campus right now? How old are you guys? <laughs> Okay, so uh, you, how you doing? Thank um, you for coming. Thank you for having me. Oh no, thank you. It's exciting. So Pittsburgh. Okay, you just get it. Oh, this is. Were you checking? What did you? I was hoping. <laughs> yeah. Disappointment. Fair enough. I mean, you wanted something else. Um, so you you did uh, Pittsburgh Comedy Festival. Yeah. That was this week. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of good people in town. Do you want to talk about that? Or just keep talking about yeah other yeah uh, <laughs> um, yeah no it's over now so it's weird talking about it now but it was dope uh, we had a lot of good comics coming in from all around the country um, did some dope shit we had a uh, Marina Franklin Todd yeah. Berry uh, J C Coakley um, do sets uh, and yeah I mean it was. It's uh, the third year I've been directing that, and um, my goal uh, for that festival was to put as few straight white males on stage as possible. Um, well, and we were successful three years running, so. I wasn't booked for it, and, and that could have been. It worked. I know, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah no, works. JK. Uh, so, what, so what got you into comedy? It's not, it's, uh, I've recently started doing this. It's not really fun. It's like, no. it's misleading. Yeah. So what got you interested in it and what kept you doing it? Uh, poor childhood and desperate need Ooh. for attention. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, I would imagine that's what What do you people clap for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they love it. It's, our pain is their joy. I mean, it's, uh, I that's worry. how comedy works. We're the clowns. We're Pagliacci. No, I think people just like to hear about me being happy and then they'll just be like, oh, I wish I was him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be like the Kim Kardashian of comics. Yeah. Like, I want people to want to be me. Yeah. If you had to be a reality TV star, like, Dave Bracey is the blank of comedy, but it had to be a reality TV star, who would it be? I'd probably be Donald Trump. That motherfucker's a president right now, so. You're I that mean, good? I, I would hope so, shit. I mean, I'm here. I don't know. I mean, how do you Yeah, you're you? here. Yeah. That's not a good. <laughs> is that a. <laughs> I was trying to help you. I didn't yeah, know. Thank you. I'll mean, take it. I'll you, take you it. You take some pride in what you do. Man. I do. Do that. I really love this show. Yeah. It means a lot to me. Yeah, no, I, I would hope that. Uh, I would hope that. Do you think I don't? I, I woke up at like eight to get here. I showered like three times today, man, so I didn't. You got be... motherfuckers like bringing out desks and shit. Like, I know. It's amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they open up the curtain and motherfuckers like, zip, zip, zip. Like, yeah. let's get you going. You know what I mean? Like, so clearly you're doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, crew. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I love you. Um, so you do shows with your podcast and stuff, and like, actually, no, I want to talk about Fresh Fest. Fresh Fest first. Mm. So uh, let's talk about it. It's a it's a beer festival. It is uh, the first black beer festival in America. Um, it was here in Pittsburgh, so you know, tell your peoples about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, it was a uh, so I'm I have a podcast called Drinking Partners uh, where me and my. Uh, my partner Ed Bailey, uh, we basically get shit faced and interview uh, important people um, around the city. Um, and some people that we want to be important uh, around the city. So uh, um, we're really connected in the craft beer community and we're sponsored by a lot of brewers around the area. And we noticed that uh, typically we're the only black people drinking craft beer wherever we're at. Um, and we wanted to change that. Um, so. My whole thing is, if uh, I'm your only black friend, then I want to introduce you to more black friends. And that's what Fresh Fest was. It was introducing all of our white friends to more black people. And uh, they seem to enjoy that. Um, yeah, so. that's good. Yeah. White people liking other people besides white people is normally good. That is a good thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're not pro-racist at Pitt tonight. In fact, we're anti-racist, if that's where we're going. I'll take that stance, anti Taylor Swift and anti-racist, sure. Yeah, that's what's awesome, that's awesome. Oh, good, thank good you. Hear. Yeah, good to hear. We take bold stances here. <laughs> you hear about those liberal college campuses, and it's just like, they're like, we don't like that. Um, so, it's okay, it's okay. Um, so what else with Fresh Fest, how did you, 
like, how did you make that happen? What was the thing that you're like, oh, craft beer? Because like, if I were to do that, I'd be like, spring off ice fest, or like, <laughs> <laughs> or like, I don't know. Uh, I mean. So why isn't spring off ice fest? Uh, why isn't it like Mike's Heart's Lemonade because Fest? Because Smirnoff doesn't. Smirnoff, well, I mean. It's too good. It's already perfect. They're, they're, I got you, no problem. They're Russians, I think. That's a problem. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, like, we're all about like local um, and supporting, you know, I mean, not only like small businesses, local businesses, and black businesses as well. Uh, and Smirnoff isn't local. They're big. No, it's not. Yeah, you know, so, I mean. <laughs> they make um, like liquid Jolly Ranchers. So. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's okay. vodka and sugar. Um, so, you know, I mean, with this, it was, it was more or less. Um, you know, providing access and, and, and education and opportunity to the black community um, to a billion dollar industry. Right. Uh, you know, Smirnoff is a no, like, I, you know, big, you know, big producer or whatever. Same thing with like AB InBev, um, you know, Budweiser and all that. Like, you know, that's cool, but like not a lot of people are like making big money off of those. Right. There's very few people making big money off of big beer. Whereas like craft beer, like, you know, the people that are making money off of that are in your community. You can go have a beer with them. You know right. the guy that owns that place. When you spend a dollar with him, that dollar goes right back into your community. You right. know? So that's what Fresh Fest was about, was, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, uh, exposing the black community here in Pittsburgh um, to that industry and that concept of, uh, you know, uh, supporting local, um, keeping your dollars uh, in your community and, um, you know, thriving, you know, as a result. So. Definitely. Yeah. So you do your podcast, Drinking Partners. Yeah. What's, um, you're, now we're here performing for an audience. That's you guys. Um, how is it different just to turn it on for like just you, a dude, and another guy in a basement? Just like, okay, time to be funny. Yeah, it's, uh, it's super weird. Um, Cause yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just two guys in a basement, um, like cracking jokes with each other. Uh, alcohol helps. Um, so that, that was a big fuel for what we do. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's different because there's, you can read and react. Like I know right. that you're enjoying it because I hear like, you know, some nervous laughter. Like I get a little bit of the, I get some affirmative action laughs every once in a while. You know, like, so, you know. <laughs> so I know, you know, I'm on the right path. But like when you're, when you're in a room with each other, like you don't know other than, um, you know, each other, the feedback. So we try to like, um, we try to keep it genuine, and if he genuinely is saying something funny that I'm enjoying, then if I'm enjoying it as a as a comic and a critic right. of you know that that uh, that environment, you know, then hopefully the people at home are enjoying it as well. And that's the hope. I mean, right. we don't we don't know that until we check our ratings, but you know, I don't check ours. Yeah, I don't. I try not to. Our producer is always like trying to throw them at me. I'm like, yeah. oh, I love our producer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was for me. I love her. Uh, no, but uh, so not all jokes go over well. No. You know what I'm talking about. So you were on Twitter for a while. Yeah. Formerly. Yeah. What happened? Uh, I ran into Nazis. Um, <laughs> oh, yikes. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. That's not good for most people, unless you're a Nazi. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, um, I woke up, uh, some guy had gotten his show canceled. Um, and you know, one of his fans was like, "Hey, you know, you're a comedian. You're you know a lover of free speech. Why don't you like try to find this guy a venue?" And I, uh, I looked him up, and um, you know, he had like a bunch of uh, very bigoted and racist jokes that he was telling. And I was like, "You know what? I'm probably not going to do that for you." Um, and uh, you know, he kind of like he got mad at me, and then the comic that. Uh, I refused to book, like, got into my mentions and was like, oh, you know, I can't believe, you know, he started, like, spouting all this, like, alt-right rhetoric and, you know, I was racist and white privilege doesn't, like, exist and, uh, you know, I'm, um, you know, and then, I, like, within a half hour I was called, like, every kind of, like, hack, fag, nigger comic that you could think of, like, um, and after a while, I was like, you know, after about like an hour or so of this, I was like, I don't want to, not only do I not want to support you, but I want to kind of like try to stop you from being in the city and getting right. like three, 500 people together to all laugh at these jokes that you're telling. Because at that point, it's not a, it's not comedy. It's a, it's a, it's a clan rally. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of like led some efforts to, uh, you know, to keep him from performing in the city. Um, and I, you know, spent about like two, three months with death threats. And you know, you can check my YouTube video, uh, slash Dave Bracey. I need the comments in there. They're still leaving them every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, after about a few days, they, uh, they banned me from Twitter for harassment. Um, I guess uh, being racially slurred for three days is harassment for some people. I don't know. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so I've been trying to get back on Twitter since then, and uh, it hasn't been fruitful until recently. I changed my name to Flag Lover 412, and people, <laughs> they stopped bothering me after that. So, uh, you know, the, uh, the alt-right, the uh, better uh, for Twitter. I mean, so what's the difference between a Dave Bracey set and a Flag Lover 412 joke? Um, Jack just isn't, is cool with the name. So you know, oh, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> the guy that owns Twitter, I guess, his bots or whatever, they're like, mm, they brace him all, but uh, flag lover, cool. You know what I mean, like this guy like, sounds like he just a picture of an eagle animal. and just like yeah, yeah, burgers and jets and like <laughs> blondes and bikinis and shit like that. Yeah, yeah love it. Yeah, so they're, they're fans of that. Well, I am too, but I'm bi a bigger fan of you. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. That was well. This is now my transition to end. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to continue with it. Uh, I'm a bigger fan of you. Uh, no, but thank you so much for coming, Gay. Uh, it's been so much fun. And uh, yeah, check him out on his YouTube. Uh, leave better comments. And we'll be right back with Siobhan Vivian. Oh. Hi, welcome back to Pitch Tonight. Our next guest is a New York Times bestselling author, a former editor and screenwriter for the Disney Channel, and a professor here at Pitt. She's wrote a new book called Stay Sweet. Please welcome Siobhan Vivian. How are you? I'm very well. How are oh, you? Good, good. We're just taking a little. Hi. Hi. I was like, they asked me to do this, and I was like, oh, just like an interview at Pitt. This is real. Yeah. Hi. Well, they're all Pitt actors. And I'm nervous. <laughs> Shoot. OK, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah. Um, JK. Uh, so you wrote a book, Stay Sweet. You're just getting in that good I've shot. written several. You've written several. Come on. You <laughs> got me on the ropes already, Siobhan. I the show, yeah. <laughs> Siobhan, you me on the ropes. Um, no, so you're a writer, and you're also a professor here at Pitt. And you also did stuff for the Disney Channel, and you also were a New York Times bestseller. That's a lot of credits to one person's name. I know. Do you want to add any more? Um, what did I miss? I don't know. Nothing. Like Nothing? loud mouth. Um, it's like lazy. <laughs> I disagree uh, yeah, on the principle I, of those other credits. It's weird. It is weird to hear that. But I mean, great. I like hearing I mean, I like, I'm definitely myself. putting New York Times bestseller on my tombstone. Um, when I die, so for sure that's going on there. Like above your like date of birth, like just de delete, just New York Times bestseller. I mean, from that's this all week that matters. Week. That's all that matters. Oh. <laughs> I need to write a book. Um, so this book, Stay Sweet, it's about um, a bunch of young women running an ice cream store. Yes, I yes, I write contemporary realistic young adult fiction, so like no vampires. Like set in a school, not on Mars, um, and that's kind of what I'm known for. So this is like my most recent thing. And yes, it's about an all-female-run ice cream stand that has a boy come and try to take over the business at the start of summer. So it's sort of like feminist and definitely a romantic comedy. Um, yeah, and it just came out this spring. What inspired? Like, so what inspires you to write about this particular setting of like a beachy ice cream? feminist well, trot. Well, like, I went to, this was like, t I've been writing full-time novelist for 10 years, and um, I was on book tour for my very first book, and I was in like the middle of nowhere, Ohio, and I was doing like a, it was like a store signing, and then I stopped by this library and did a little creative writing presentation, and on the way out, the librarian was like, oh, you should, um, hit up this ice cream place called Durbin's. It's just down the road. Um, they're really well known for their hot fudge. And so, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's summer. Like, sure, I'm gonna go there. So she said, you won't miss it. So I'm driving down this road, it's like a country road, and she was right. It's like a little shack, but there's maybe like a half mile of cars parked in the ditch. So I actually had to double back to park. And I get out and I go up to the ice cream stand and like everybody in the town is there, um, like grandparents and like right. a little league team and teens and I was just having lots of summer feelings. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and I get up to the window and it's the 
these like adorable teen girls working in this like really cramped space and it's super fucking hot and like but they're having fun and they have a shitty radio with like foil around the antenna but they're having a good time so I definitely was having sort of YA feelings I guess for oh, these man. girls and I order my cone and um, pay and I'm getting my change and I notice that the girl who is waiting on me has this shirt on and it says hot fudge hotties on it and I was like oh. hey, what's the deal with that shirt yeah, that's right weird. like that's a weird shirt and so she gives me this look like she's been asked this a million times and then she goes over her shoulder so I'm rising up on my tiptoes to try to see what's happening and in the back of the stand is this admittedly hot teen guy who's in the office of the stand with his phone, looking at his phone, and he has two fans pointed at his head, and he's not working at all, and he ain't wearing the damn shirt. He's not a hot fudge hottie. So I was like, this is so weird. And I sat there, and I ate my ice cream cone, and this like idea for a book just popped in my brain like popcorn. Like I couldn't stop right. thinking about it. And then, you know, I was working on a couple other things. It was always in the back of my mind. And then like the election happened and I had like more feelings about like women and leadership positions yeah. and stuff. So it just felt like the right time to write it. Best five dollars I've ever spent, for sure. Oh no, yeah, I think you. I think that. It paid off. Yeah. How it was, was it actually like fantastically hot fun? No, it was really good. Okay, yeah, so what it is really it worth good. the trip from Pittsburgh yeah. to? Yeah, they're known for it. They're, yeah, and they're also weirdly known for these shirts. Well, like, like there's that's like articles gross. about this like, rando it, ice cream stand. Is it like articles like a good like? No. No. Not like a Jezebel article. Like this is horrible. We should stop. Well, this. also the stand has been around for like you know fifty years and. It was owned by this woman, and then they sold it to this like other guy. And here's this like younger guy taking over this ice cream stand, bringing this like contemporary vision to it. Like I don't know how to even explain these stupid shirts, but um, yeah. And the the townspeople were all like, "This is weird and like slightly uncomfortable, but we really like the ice cream, so right. I guess we're still going." And uh, yeah, so that was kind of how the book was born. That's so, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I just can't get over like the YA idea. Like gold. Yeah, I'm just like hot fudge hotties. Hot like, fudge and then hotties. they can just like. Oh. The hard part is I really wanted to work hot fudge hotties into the book. Is it? I couldn't. Because Copyright you would never want to make out with that guy who made you wear that shirt. So I had to like Did we just get a spoiler? No, not really. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> I mean, it's a YA book. They're totally making out, so. Great. Not too big of a spoiler. Did you have any good jobs like that growing up, like a good? No, no. I mean, <laughs> it was such a mess. Like my teen years were so messy. Yeah. So no, I only had cool jobs after I got my act together and went to college. And then I had very cool jobs. My prized possession is a picture I have of myself um, drinking a beer in Big Bird's Nest on Sesame Street set, because I used to work for Sesame Street. Prized possession. Um, also, no, like, I got to go in the Muppet morgue, where they keep the Muppets in these drawers and touch them, and touch their googly eyes. I grew up <laughs> loving the Muppets. My, I used to make my family watch the Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, a classic, Every yeah. day, like in, <laughs> like. Wait it, a minute, I was on board, but no. Oh no, <laughs> that VHS is destroyed now, of just how many times, except these, I would always fast forward. Uh, for true fans of the Muppets Christmas Carol, uh, where the two there's like two people, <laughs> there's just people in the back, just like yeah, Gonzo, so good in that. Gonzo's the lead in this one, oh. um, but Marley and Marley, the two uh, the two dudes in the balcony, they're ghosts. The old guys, the old guys, the crotchety yeah. old guys. Yeah, but they're ghosts. Is this a fake? Is this a prop or is this water for me? It was already all drinking, or drinking, <laughs> drunk. It's real. It's real. The oh, other there's... guy didn't drink out of it, did he? Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, if I drink out of wow. it, will it make it better? No. Are, we, are you sponsored? Yeah, by, by Quakerism. By Quaker Oats? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> As arguably one of the most noted Quakers currently okay. in the pop culture zeitgeist, yeah. Cool. The only other famous Quaker 
there is water We're in this? We're off the rails here. No, it's Sorry. okay. I want to talk about this. Uh, the only <laughs> famous Quaker I can think of is, have you ever seen Clueless? Come on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> come on. Um, it's really good. Uh, but the skateboarder in it, yeah, the cute boy, he was in Buffy, he was like a bit player. He, like, yeah, he was barely in Buffy. I know, he's in Buffy. I love Buffy. Uh, <laughs> go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. <laughs> okay. Do you know how many times I've made people talk about David Boreanaz on this show? Do you know how many times I've made people talk about how hot Angel is? I had a I'm professor a here like... like oh, that Angel wasn't hot. Angel was like like a frat reject, like yeah. so flat, yeah. like wooden, he looked emotionless. Boring and it was perfect. He had muscles. He was big, he was and, big and boring. That's exactly what I want. I don't want you to talk. The I just want you to be. The real thing came with Spike when she like crossed over to the dark side. They're yeah. dancing in the club that one night. Yeah, dancing in the club like, with like a bleached out, like just like ooh, I paint my nails black and they're right. all chipped. That's gross. I always had the thing for the bad boy, so. Like, yeah, Angel I had, was never bad. I've always had a it. thing for the vampires who have uh, killed hundreds of people in the past <laughs> life. Uh, everyone has their as type. As you do, as you do. How I like my, I like my coffee just like how I like my men. Murderous. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Hot. Okay, well, we'll be back with a fun... Can I go to game? Wait, do we have three... Okay, we're gonna keep talking, sorry. Yeah. Wasting it on buff. I'm sorry. We should. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, talk about sorry. other things. I'm gonna ask you about your book now. Hi. Uh, the other book. So, okay. <laughs> editing, editing, editing. <laughs> Action. Um, so, uh, good point. Good point. Um, so, what's your uh, what's your favorite book right now of yours? Um. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna talk about this. I was told specifically to phrase that question like that. Well, Correct. yeah, okay, this is actually real because they do a pre-interview and I'm like in, I've been asked that question before, like what's, the, what's your favorite book of yours? She didn't say of yours, but I answered it, of mine, so now I, I seemed like a super narcissist, so I was saying in backstage, like can you please just ask me if, what's your favorite book of yours so I don't come off like a jerk. But this is something kind of, this is on an interesting side. Your, one of your books has to be someone's favorite book. How does that make you feel? Like, like just statistically, like that's gonna happen and like you're a very good writer. No, it's so like, super weird. Well, you know what's weirder? Like, you know, not to like sound braggy or whatever, but like I, I am published all over the world. Yeah. And I was in, I was sent to the Philippines last fall um, to do signings and there were people waiting for like hours and bringing you gifts and like, you know, I don't, it, it just was so weird and surreal because I just, you know, wrote that in my apartment by myself, you know, like unshowered and now it's like That's somebody's beautiful. thing. It was really um, surreal, but. What kind of things would people bring you? Would they like? Mangoes what? in the Philippines. They're like super into their mangoes. Okay, but then. girls would make like stationery for me and write me letters. And actually, boys would also give you presents because in the Philippines, it's not weird for boys to read books with girls on the cover or oh. romantic books or, you know, like YA books. It's not embarrassing at all. So that took a while for me to get used to as well yeah. that the boys would be giving you gifts and then I'd be signing for them and I'm like, oh, to your girlfriend? And they're like, no, wow. to me. You you know, it took a while to, to pull to back accept that gender is a construct. Yeah. Yeah. Guess, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh. It took me a little bit, but yeah. One of my favorite books growing up was uh, a book I was incapable of relating to. Is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Oh, and yeah. I, I, Judy. It's Judy Bloom. Yeah. Uh, it's a good. She. Ta it's about a girl getting her first period. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I felt like that's my. Sorry, uh, this is just us lit heads here. We love to read. So we're, we're, you may never heard of uh, acclaimed author Judy Bloom, but uh, up here we know Super a lot. obscure. Yeah. Super obscure. Super fudge obscure. Yeah. obscure. Uh, do you hope to get any gifts of just bounties of ice cream? Um, I've gotten a lot. I've gotten like an ice cream magnet. I've gotten um, somebody made like a doll of one of the characters in the book. Um, so I get thoughtful. like random stuff. It's really nice, but then it's also like. My suitcase is very full, you know. So you're kind of carrying on like all like these how heavy are, is sentimentality? Like yeah, how much it's, is it's, it worth? It's very nice. It's very nice. I have like random shit like that all over my office, which is it's it's encouragement when like the days that writing sucks, which is most of the. What time. if one of your students brought you a, a lovely gift like that? How would that go over? I, that's happened. Just they got an A, like <laughs> definitely. And uh, your class is going to be 
available. For yes, I'm totally plugging my class. Like, yes. I, I teach two classes here, so I'm never here. I'm only here on Wednesday nights. I teach a class called Writing Youth Literature, which is basically like if you want to write a YA book. And it's one of the few classes at Pitt where you start working on a longer novel length piece. A lot of the creative writing classes are more short story focused. So Writing Youth Lit 1 is sort of the entry level of that. You start a book in my class, and then there's a second section, Writing Youth Lit 2, which is basically, for those of you who know, kind of NaNoWriMo. So you're writing oh, yeah. an entire draft, a shitty first draft, but a draft of a book over the semester. Um, it's a really, I love teaching that class. That is so cool. Yeah, like I don't want to, I'm not like a tenured person here. I actually like, it's sort of like a joke that anyone even asked me to do this, like to teach here. That was seven years ago. But I love <laughs> workshopping stories and I really love this class and I love, um, you know, so many of the students who I've met over the years through the class. So well, I'm going to plug my class. Oh, good. Plug the class? Yeah. Well, I love talking to you and uh, we'll be right back with a fun game so uh, stay tuned <laughs> no, no. okay hey welcome back to Pitch tonight I'm with Siobhan and uh, I have a few questions for her so you're versed you've showed your knowledge of young adult fiction with your knowledge of Judy Bloom but okay uh, <laughs> like a low bar but okay okay um, I'm gonna give you some choices of different young adult scenarios and I'm gonna ask, what scenario would you rather be in? Now, like a F. Mary Kill. <laughs> kind of, but not real. Well, maybe in some points. Depends okay. how you play the game. Okay. Uh, but they, <laughs> those are three really good options to do things. Okay. Like, those are some yeah. pretty big yeah. ones. Um, but I, they are right and wrong answers. Oh. Okay. So your first choice: Who would you rather be in a love triangle with? Okay. Uh, the Weasley twins. <laughs> or. Yo, good whistle. They cute <laughs> as hell. Um, or the Wright brothers before they made it. I'm gonna go Wright brothers. That's the on right that. answer. No, yeah, you gonna. <laughs> That's me laugh Here's that. why. Because they, if we were walking down the street today, they would look like hipsters. Like they would just look like they came, they're in town to play a show from Brooklyn, and I would show them some inventive stuff. Like, yeah. From the future. Blow their minds. You would show them the future? Yeah, I'd show them the future. <laughs> okay, these people have magic. I'm just throwing that out here. I know, but like, okay. I want to be the star of the love You triangle. are in the love triangle? Do you think they're in love with each other? No, they're no, in love I mean, with me. I mean, you know, you into that I know, weird like, Pottermore fan person, fiction. If you're the person that they like, but they have magic, like, what are you bringing into the equation? I don't know. Ask Bella Swan. Slam. Yes. <laughs> I'm starting beef with everyone okay. tonight. Um, that was the wrong answer. Got it. No. Okay. Who has it worse? The house, of, the house elves of Hogwarts, or the Oompa Loompas? Oh, Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompas. Do booty do. You're right. Yeah. For sure. That's a horrible gig. They're like enslaved. Yeah, super. Like they just need to. These people just need socks. Mm. <laughs> and he was loved. Yes. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah. And learn to love himself. Yeah. Ugh. Now, you're quite stylishly dressed. Thanks. Um, and I love clothes myself. Now, would you rather... You're already laughing. Oh, would you rather have a leather jacket made out of Eeyore? <laughs> or a fur coat made out of Aslan from Narnia? <laughs> Why? I just feel like it's he a was the physical, like C.S. Lewis's embodiment of a Jesus-like character. <laughs> Is it because he wanted him to sacrifice? Yeah, for you? no, I feel like that would really have like a sheen to it. Oh, it would. It would. This was a deep cut, so we didn't do it. <laughs> but the Daemons, or however it's pronounced in the Golden Compass, I always wanted. They have this golden monkey, and I always wanted a hat made out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yes, I want to. Eat it's it. like an answer on like a therapy questionnaire somewhere. Yeah, what do you see when you look at a rock of Rorschach? A bunch of monkeys I'm killing to make hats out of. It's the worst Cruella de Vil uh, ever. Uh, no, I, the correct answer was Eeyore. Because it's a freaking lion. Uh, um, okay, okay. You're weighing your options. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 
rules of threeing it, okay. except with a lot more than oh, three. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> not all of them have to be winners. Uh, would you rather live in a Harry Potter styled basement? Not basement, under the stairs situation. Or would you rather cubby. live in. Cubby. <laughs> it was a. It was like right. a. Yeah, sure, okay. a cubby. Uh, or a luxury condo with like three of the Twilight vampires, but you don't know which three they're gonna be. <laughs> so it could be one of those weird ones in the second movie that just were like. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> That's a really tough one. I'll tell you for sure, there will be one of those weird ones in this one. Okay. <laughs> but free Wi-Fi. No, I'm gonna go, I'm going Lux on that for sure. That's like a New York City apartment. I'm like. <laughs> or like a micro home. Like one of those you. like. No, definitely that. Are you sure? Yes. Trust the old person who's lived in many bad apartments. I, there's no, it doesn't matter how okay, weird well, my roommates Trust are. the person totally who lived with vampires. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Um, we did this one. <laughs> so you really would just kill a lion to get a coat? You That's said I had to. No. I, it, there was no third option of like, no fur. <laughs> there was no PETA option there, so I had you could to go. have taken your stance. If I, I, you want me to wear it, so if I'm like gonna go through the I mean, trouble, it's a I wear it would be it. a beautiful fur. Yeah. I mean, just. It would it, be a beautiful fur. It's just all of that, just gold and just. It's not really my look, but. It's a statement it's piece. It's just knowing I have it, I it's feel just, like would make me carry myself differently. It's like an investment, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, who would you rather have as your nemesis okay. in. Um, like a YA novel. So like okay. the guy who's wearing the like, who's not wearing the hot fudge hotties. Would you rather have a literary punk Holden Caulfield or, <laughs> yo, I do not like him, or, or that weenie from, that's Morgan Freeman. Uh, <laughs> that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Um, That wasn't nemesis. the one. That's you, not the one I was gonna mention. You mean just like I meant the little shitless. kid in a uh, magic treehouse. Uh, <laughs> he is a punk. He's so annoying. He is annoying. I'm gonna go Holden because like, Ooh. I'm that kid's no match for me. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you think you could beat up? If it's a good story, like, I mean, I was suspended for fighting in high school. Get out. Yes. Did you win? Um, Yo, that's I think it was too messy. Uh, I did throw a book over my shoulder and I hit some kid in the eye with my book and I gave him one of those bloody eyes. Those are crazy looking. I grew up in New Jersey. They're the streets are bad. Wait, like, so like, did you feel empowered by that as like a writer? No, it's not a good story. I cried okay. oh. after the vice principal pulled me off of Maria Politz by the waist. Okay. <laughs> I have one more question, because I just want to show people that I didn't have a picture of Morgan Freeman. I'm a professor. Freeman. Would you rather have your books narrated by Morgan Freeman or me? I'm going to go you, oh, yeah, that, Andrew. You're youthful. I am youthful. He's no old. Their dad old and dead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Siobhan. Thank you. You've been so much fun. We'll be right back. Thank you. Our musical act tonight is the Lone Pines. They're a folk rock band from Pittsburgh, and you can find their music on Bandcamp. So, without further ado, give it up for them.
Said she wants to be just like Jesus, but that's too big a cross to bear. He said there's different rules for the divines. She said she really doesn't care. Said she really doesn't care. She said there can be treasure in the hard prey And there can be pleasure in the pain He said if that's true and only Go so far For it makes you go insane For it makes you go insane Some folks die alone, others never go home alone. I'm somewhere in between, that'll be where you can find me. She said you don't say no. If I'm wrong, you're wrong sometimes too. She said, I want you to tell me, boy, don't you lie. What's your dream version of you? What's your dream version of you? Thank you, Rick. He said, I want to be just like Achilles without the weakness in my heels she said don't you know that everyone's gotta break sometimes she said you can't fight if you can't feel oh no no you can't fight if you can't feel some folks gotta drink to sleep others only drink once a week wish I was right in between at least you'll know
got Ricky Lagnese on the bass and the guitar. We got Tony Lupinacci on the drums and harmonica. My name's Josh with the Lone Vines. Thank you for tonight. Guys, thank you so much for coming out to Pit Tonight. I'm Andrew Dow. This has been Pit Tonight. And I just want to first thank all of the staff for working so hard on the show. It was not super convenient to come in early and to move in early to work on the show. So thank you, everyone on the staff. Thank you all for coming out. And have a great day of school tomorrow. Thank you.